Hello and welcome back to Real Analysis. And first, as always, I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. And now in today's part 42, we will talk about the important theorem of L'Hopital. It's a useful result that helps you to calculate limits and it's very popular among students because it's so nicely applicable. Now, in order to prove this, we have to apply the mean value theorem we learned in the last video. However, we need it here in a slightly more general form. And often it's simply called the extended mean value theorem. Indeed, the only difference we find here compared to the normal mean value theorem is that we don't just have one function f, but two functions f and g. Otherwise, everything looks the same, so we have a compact interval as the domain and the two functions are differentiable. However, now we also have to say something about the derivative of g which should be never zero, at least inside the interval. And then, as in a normal mean value theorem, we get an inner point x hat, where we find the mean slope. However, here this mean slope is not a normal slope, but rather a combination of the two functions f and g. So the difference in the denominator is now measured with the function g. Moreover, this is also not just f prime of x hat, but rather f prime of x hat divided by g prime of x hat. So you see, this is also an expression that combines the two functions f and g now with the derivatives. More importantly, you should see that this actually extends the mean value theorem from the last video. Because you can simply choose g to be the identity, so the linear function x. We see this immediately because in this case the derivative would be the constant 1. And then indeed f prime of x hat is the normal mean slope. Okay, then I think we are able to prove the extended mean value theorem. This should not be a problem at all, because we can use the same ideas as in the last video. Namely, we will use Holtz theorem again, which was already very close to the mean value theorem. And in order to do that, we define a new function we call h. Now in the case you remember the last proof we did, you already know, this function should be zero at the boundary points. And we get that when we subtract the mean secant function. However, in this case, the secant is a little bit more complicated, but still we start with f of x and subtract the secant function. But as you already know, the generalized slope should be this quotient here. And also the role of x is now given to g of x. Therefore, we have to multiply with g of x minus g of a. Nevertheless, the y coordinate is still the same, so we add f of a. And with this, we have the definition of h. And to this function, we can apply Rolle's theorem. And what you should check is that we have all the assumptions. Differentiability is not a problem at all, and we have the zeros at the boundary. Now, please recall, these are exactly the assumptions of Rolle's theorem, and it tells us there is a point x hat in the open interval such that h prime of x hat is exactly zero. Therefore, the only thing that is left to do is to calculate h prime with this formula. And you see, this is not hard at all. We immediately get f prime of x hat minus this strange slope times g prime of x hat. Now, reformulating shows this is exactly our claim. Hence, the proof of this extended mean value theorem is finished. Okay, now as promised, we want to use this result to prove L'Hopital's rule. In the first step, let's formulate the theorem. I already told you, we can use it to calculate limits, therefore we need two functions defined on the same domain i. Moreover, it should be an interval and the functions we call f and g. Now, usually the limits one wants to calculate here are given with a quotient. Namely, we write it as the limit x to x0 of f of x divided by g of x. Of course, you can always put such a limit to paper, but then the question arises, does it actually exist? And indeed, we have a nice possibility to answer this question for functions that are differentiable. Because in this case, we can also look at the derivatives in the limit. However, now you see, we need way more assumptions that all of these limits make sense. First of all, we have to fix our point x0 from the interval i. And then you should note that in most cases we can immediately calculate this limit here. Simply because we have continuous functions involved. The only case where the question occurs if this limit exists at all 
is when f of x0 and g of x0 are both 0. Of course, if we would have 0 divided by 0, this wouldn't make any sense. But here we have a limit, so both terms here could get smaller and smaller. And there you see, we have something similar to the definition of the derivative. Ok, looking at the left hand side, we now want to be able to calculate this limit. Which means we have a restriction for g prime. Namely, it should be non-zero outside of the fixed point x0. Hence, this means we guarantee now that this number exists outside of the point x0. And then the question makes sense to ask, does the limit exist? To be more precise, g prime could vanish, but in a neighborhood around x0, it should not vanish, except for the point x0 itself. There, we could have any value. Ok, by having all this, we get our result. If this left limit exists, then also the right limit exists. And indeed, in this case we also get that both limits coincide. Which immediately gives us a nice calculation rule for the original limit f divided by g. We just have to know the derivatives. Ok, and this is what we call L'Hopital's rule. And of course, now we won't have any problems proving it. We can just immediately apply our extended mean value theorem. In order to do this, please recall that every limit is defined using sequences. Therefore, let's choose such a sequence xn from the interval i, which has not the value x0. However, it should get closer and closer to x0, so it should converge to x0. So let's denote it like this. And now the idea is that we apply the extended mean value theorem from above for every n. To put it in other words, the interval a, b should now be the interval x, n, x, 0, or the interval x, n, x, 0, depending which number is bigger. Most importantly, this means that our point x hat lies between x, n and x, 0. And now because this works for all n in n, we immediately get a whole sequence out. Ok, now we know every point in the sequence, x hat n, lies between x, n and x, 0. However, since we have the limit xn to x0, we know this interval here gets as small as we want. Or in other words, there is no other possibility than that x hat n also converges to x0. Ok, so this is very neat, but you see there is still one important part of the extended mean value theorem missing here. Namely, we have that this strange mean slope, given by the two functions f and g, is equal to the quotient with the derivatives f prime x hat n divided by g prime x hat n. And please note, here on the left hand side we have the boundary points of the interval. So x n and x 0, and then it does not matter in which order they occur. However, by the assumption of the theorem, we know that f of x 0 and g of x 0 vanish. So the whole left hand side is just f of x n divided by g of x n. Ok, now please recall, when we put in that this limit exists, this means that the limit of the right hand side exists. Hence we can conclude the limit on the left hand side also exists, and is equal to the other limit. And there you see, this is the whole proof of the theorem of L'Hopital. If we know that this limit exists, then we can conclude that also this limit exists. Hence there are no question marks left here, the existence of this limit is guaranteed by the existence of this one. And then of course we are allowed to apply this nice formula here. Therefore now I would suggest doing that in an example. So let's try calculating the limit of the logarithm 1 plus x divided by x. For the limit x to 0, the assumptions of L'Hopital's rule are fulfilled because log of 1 is 0. Hence we can just try working with the derivatives which is 1 divided by 1 plus x divided by 1. Please note here, the justification for L'Hopital's rule will come at the end if it works. And in fact here it does because we get out 1. So this is a nice result, therefore let's look at another example. Again let's take the limit x to 0, but now with 1 minus cosine of x in the numerator. With x squared in the denominator we see both terms are 0 at 0. Hence, let's try applying L'Hopital's rule. So in the numerator we have plus sine of x and in the denominator 2 times x. Now here you see, at this point we still don't know if this limit exists. 
However, you see sine of 0 is 0 and 2 times x at the position 0 is 0 as well. Therefore, we could just try applying L'Hopital a second time. Then the derivative here gives us the cosine of x and in the denominator just 2. And since cosine of 0 is 1, we get out 1 half. So you see, at this point we can just go backwards again. This limit exists, therefore this one exists. And because of that, also the first one exists. And the value for all of the limits is just 1 half. And that's how you apply the nice rule of L'Hopital. Okay, then in the next video I will tell you how we can generalize all of this. So I really hope I see you there. Bye!